Hi there, Donnelly Perfect. And Michael Bennett. And together we are the Dream Guards. And as experts in resilience and overcoming adversity, we often get asked from parents, one of the biggest questions actually is how we deal with bullying when our child is being bullied in the school. So we thought we'd make this little video here mm. just to explain a few tips and tools that may be able to help you. Have you ever felt stress when your child's come home after being bullied and you feel a little bit frustrated about what to do and how to help? Well, yeah. Hopefully we can help you with that today. I think a lot of parents are uncertain about that we want to get a bit of clarity about is the actual definition of bullying. And the definition of bullying is a misuse of power by one person or a group of people over another person continuously, repetitively. It is not a one-off event. So it's not where your child might get on the bus one morning and somebody picks on them because they may have got out of bed the wrong way, maybe they got picked on at home and they're in a bad mood. And so they took it out on your son or daughter one time. That is not bullying. Bullying is also not physical violence. No, that's, that's actually a criminal offence. Yeah, so it's face-to-face, -face. it can be on the, online, cyberbullying, and it can be excluding, and it can be spreading rumours. These are all ways that people can bully you. And when your child approaches you and shares with you that they may have been bullied at school, the first thing you, that a parent needs to to come from a place of love, come from a place of empathy, come from a place of compassion and kindness with a listening ear. Really important that we listen to our child as they express what's going on for them. It is actually a really difficult thing for children to open up and share what's happening at school with a parent. In fact, Statistics state that they are more likely to share this information with a peer than a parent. So if they have reached out and they've expressed to you, then this is an amazing step forward and it needs to be acknowledged, but please come from a place of love. Please come from a place of an open heart and sit with your child and just listen without any words. We just need to listen first off. And we totally, totally understand how hard that can be when you see the distress of your child and you do want to want to comfort uh, them and make sure that they're okay, but you're also trying to fix it straight away. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you're letting them express their emotions and showing them that you've got the strength to listen is absolutely, absolutely amazing. And then giving them praise about how they've handled it and praise about them opening up for a start and talking to you because that is one of the best things they can do. Mm. So always thank them for, for letting them know what's going on and you can reward their re resilience. Mm. By, yeah, mm. really important that we reward the resilience because it's in resilience that we grow and it's in resilience that we learn the most about life and we need to reward even the little tiny steps moving forward, whatever those might be. And it might be that your child has moved towards a new group of people and that takes courage to you know, move to a new circle of friends. It may be that they have chosen to, sp to speak to somebody about their problem. And these are all ways that they are developing resilience and courage within them. So it's really important that we, we you know, acknowledge that, those little steps that they are making forward. And we need to listen from, like I said, you know, get into their shoes and try and understand how it is, what it's like for them uh, and uh, how it feels for them right now and what they're going through. <laughs> this is Rocky Rockstar. And try and use some open-ended questions if you can when you're having that discussion with your child about their experience with being bullied. So it may be just an open question about how does that make you feel? What do you think you could have done differently when that person said that to you? When that person chose to speak to you that way or maybe exclude you from their circle? What could you have done differently? And 
you know, we've had some amazing stories of people like Sammy Pierce, who was eight years old and he was he had his head flushed down the toilet and death threats. And he changed his whole world around by, in fact, using our peace tools, but also by making friends with the bully. He actually invited his bully to home for a play date one day and they became really good friends. So sometimes it's a matter of opening up to new options and new ideas. But if you can sit down with your child and maybe even make a list of ways that there can be different choices and solutions to this problem. So it opens up your his mind, her mind, to different ways of handling this problem. Yeah, and it's not coming straight out of you saying, this is how we're going to handle the problem. Ask them, how would you like me to handle this problem? Or how, how would you like me to help you in the situation that you're at? So it, it gives the power back to the child. And so they can be grateful for your for your courage of standing up for them, but you're actually leaving the power with them to say, what would you like me to do? I'm, I'm here for you, this is up to you. How would you like me to handle this with you? Yeah, or how, so. how can I support you through this? Yeah. Because you know, it's also, if we can share with our child that life is full of ups and downs. That's the way life is. We have adversity every day. And, and so by helping our child to realize that this is part of life, and you know, we can learn so much through these experiences and they are not always negative experiences. They help us to become stronger, more courageous and more resilient. And so it can be a gift, some of these experiences. So if we can look at them from a perspective of, okay, how does this make you feel? What ways can you maybe look at how you can handle the situation differently next time? Let's list them. Let's go through them on paper so that you, your child is armed with some strategies when they are faced with the situation next time on how they can deal with it. And it actually empowers your child to find solutions to their own problems so you're not fixing it for them, which really is not going to help them in the real world. Yeah, true. And there's one thing I'd like to point out as well is to be aware of your conversations that you have with family members or friends while your child is in earshot. Because if you're talking to your friend down the road or one of the family members, like husband and wife talking to each other, or an older sibling saying that your daughter, your son, calling them by name and say they were bullied today, they were bullied yesterday, they're getting bullied all the time, they're getting bullied, and they're hearing this, this actually becomes a programming in the child will hear this and then maybe come back from school the next day. You say, how was today? I was bullied again today. And you go, oh my goodness, oh, that was bullied. He was bullied again today. You've got to be aware and understand that this could be programming to them because you're now talking about them and they're getting some attention. And the last thing they want to do is to let you down. Mm. So they're going to come back and say, I was bullied again today. You can talk about me again today. If that makes sense. Like if you are... If you empower your child and talk to your friends, siblings, your partner, and say, oh, Jimmy, he's, he's amazing. He's got so much resilience. He's going to get over this. Mm. His wings are able to fly. He is so courageous, and he'll help out other people wow. get out of this situation. To know that when he comes back from school, say, how was school today? I was actually really good. People did try and pick on me, but I was able to stand up to them and I helped somebody else to stop getting bullied because mm. that's, that's what he was hearing from you. Mm. So he now doesn't want to let you down when you're saying how strong he is and, and how amazing he is and looking after and he's got a great connected heart for other people. So it's, it's kind of a... Just be aware of the conversations that you're having within the earshot of the child that is being bullied. And because if you perpetuate the word bullied, it can be programming. So, mm, yeah, yeah, something we've noticed. And I think if you can use the word challenging, life, life has some challenges for, for Billy right now. But he's overcoming those challenges and we're really proud of him. He's building resilience instead of the bullying. And, you know, children, they love, they love attention. So... The more attention they're going to get, whether it's negative or positive, they are going to want more of that.
Yeah. So if we can try and really reward them with good, a good and attention and focus on the resilience and rewarding them for the resilience, the little steps forward. And we talk a lot about in our peace tools, the armor, which is the A in the peace tools. And we talk about using your imagination to build a powerful armor around your body so other people's opinions don't matter in your world. And we say a lion doesn't lose sleep over the opinions of sheep. Yeah, always be the lion. Mm, yeah, Always be the lion. And so it is also, you know, we'll talk a little bit more about online bullying in another segment, but it is about not allowing people in past that armor. That armor is so powerful that things that are not going to serve us well just bounce off our armor and they're not allowed into our, into our space. And I think it's, yeah. it's really important we empower people. Yeah. Kids to... And you can do that in a fun way with your child as well, is like get them to build it and they can feel it and just go, and we've got the armour. And, and when they leave to go to school, don't forget, have you got your armour yeah. on today? And, yeah. and they go, yeah, I've got that. And shoulders yeah. back and chin up. By the, and that's the P. By putting your shoulders back and your chin up, you're less likely to be picked on or bullied because you're showing yourself to be confident and powerful and protected. Protect just, yourself. Just by having your shoulders back mm. and your chin up. And if you can teach your child that, it's a great stance to have. And it's, and it's so good. Yeah. So going back to, to if your child is being bullied, these are all the strategies that you can use to help support them. But it's also really important for you as a parent to document these conversations that you're having with your child. Write down the dates, write down the times, as much as you can, the, the facts and figures and information that you can gather, so that when you have the meeting with your child's teacher, which should always be the first point, is that you go to your child's teacher and have a chat with them about what's going on with your child. And you have all of this documented so that you're able to discuss the facts, the information without getting too emotional, not, get, not allowing it to get uh, to escalate. And if you then are not having too much success with your teacher, the next stage is to go and see the principal. And again, further documentation about your meeting with the teacher, what happened, what's been going on, and take this documentation into your principal. And, you know, in the meantime, while you're going through this, sometimes it can be really you know, stressful. Oh, it's a a very stressful. Mm. I mean, um, and, uh, you, you're the parent, and of course, the, the last you thing want you want to do thing. is to see your see your babies getting hurt in any way whatsoever. Mm. Mm. And physically, is one thing, and that's just out of control. But emotionally, uh, you don't want to see your child get hurt because of the connection that you have with a parent and a child. The emotion and the energy just. Uh, is, is just so connected so you must be aware of your energy as well and we don't want you to be stressed and so that's taking mindful moments if they're coming home from school that you're not you're not stressed about what happened today and just taking a few deep breaths before they get to the front door so you're uh, you're in a good frame of mind to to greet them and you're you're staying as a powerful source for them that they can feel some loving energy Instead of uh, stress, what, what happened today? What happened today? You're taking it on, just going, there's my little soldier. How are you? Come on yes. in, you know. And, and yeah. being mindful and in the moment, being yeah. present and not allowing your mind to go too forward, too much to the future or thinking about the past and what happened yesterday and how your son or daughter was True. bullied and how they were treated and, uh, you know, wallowing in that kind of past situation or looking at, oh my gosh, what can happen? What could happen? True. Stay mindful and stay present and, and be kind be, be kind to yourself. Be kind to yourself. Yeah. Show self-compassion yeah. and de-stress. And there's lots of ways that you can do that, you know, just by showing compassion for yourself. So whatever those special things that you love to do, whether that's reading, whether that's taking baths, whether it's taking long book, walks along the beach or maybe meditating. And, and we have meditations on our app, which are on our free Dream Guards app. So these are the sort of things that we're wanting to offer our community and parents and children and teenagers to help them de-stress in these situations. Yeah, because you, you will be the, the conduit to your beautiful child and they will be looking for that energy from you as well. So if you are centered and you're being kind to yourself, you can then pass on that energy 
to your beautiful child as well. And if they're going through any sort of a stressful situation, the last thing you want to do is be stressful yourself and that kinetic energy will just go around to a vicious circle. So as a parent and an adult, try and center yourself, be kind to yourself and, and, give, and create that energy for yourself that you can then empower that energy with your beautiful child. So he can then have that, to go to sleep with that night and then the next day it'll be fine. Mm. So. And, you know, draw, see if your child can even draw some courage from you. So through this challenge and through this adversity, your child may actually draw some courage from you to go to school the next day, putting his shoulders back, her shoulders back, head high, and building her armour and, and realising that, hey, this is life, and life is, has ups and downs, and it's not, it's not uh, always easy, sometimes it's difficult, but through adversity, we grow, to be better versions of ourselves, stronger, more courageous, yeah, and more ready to face face life. And also let your let your child know that they have resources for themselves as well. So if they don't feel as though they can talk to you or the teachers or the principal, Kids Helpline is a fantastic resource for children. And that's whether they're they're finding their homework hard or a friend's not mm. talking to them, mm. or they are being really picked on or bullied, any, it could be anything whatsoever, mm. that they feel as though they, can, they want to talk to somebody else. And sometimes, I mean, as parents ourselves, we know, we know your kids just, they, they, you don't know anything, mum and dad, and they, they, if they haven't got any other elderly friends or anybody there, Kids Helpline, they're there and they'll just answer any question and give them a bit of guidance and, and ears to listen to and, and a bit of love as well, which is a great resource. So Kids Helpline is an amazing, amazing resource. Kids Helpline's on our app as well, Michael. So we have Lifeline, we have Headspace, we have Kids Helpline. So that's also available just at the touch of your fingers on our Dream Guards free app. So we've, we've got this uh, amazing app available to you to help you support you parents through some of these challenging times that we have as parents. Yeah, and and you're doing a great job. Yeah, That's all we want to sure. say because you know what? We didn't get taught <laughs> how to be parents at school. We, there was no books that you know, taught us how to do this. We learn as we stumble through life as a parent. And mm. you're doing an amazing job. And just remember to be kind to yourself. Yeah, do be kind to yourself. And on that support service, you can go straight to each and every one of these nine support services there. And there's lots and lots of information as well that, that will answer the questions for you that we may not have covered here. So mm. yeah, do be kind to yourself. And we hope we, you've found this uh, a help in some way. And we hope everything is fine and your children go up and flourish to be fantastic and like they should be living in a, in a happy and healthy world. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure. <laughs> Peace out, guys. Cheers. Peace out.